understanding awareness the first aspect of awareness is that rejecting will not lead to awareness you have to accept things as it is so first aspect is rejecting if you want to get rid of something do not reject it do not cling to it just accept it as it is try to understand the mind mind is very useful mechanism it helps you to express and manifest all that is within you flowering certainly the mind is not to be rejected at all if you reject it it will remain rejection means repression and awareness means total acceptability awareness is total acceptability and you grow into awareness only if you accept something you want to get rid of something accept it it is there then you understand the nature of the mind and there is no one who has explained the nature of the mind more beautifully than the indian mystic the 3rd century bc 3rd century mystic adi shankar it is a beautiful story he wanted to attain to sanyas renunciation he was 9 years of age his father has passed away he was the only son mother was not giving him permission how do you expect to give permission to a 9 year old child to enter into renunciation it happened it says that he went to take a bath in the river and a crocodile held his foot he pointed out to the mother this is how the life is any moment death may come in crocodile represents the death any moment death may come in so before that comes let me make a decision and take the renunciation follow the path he was 5 or 6 years of age lived in the southernmost tip of india which is kerala the end of india and the other extreme side is himalayan mountains 3rd century imagine the time the age of the child 3 6 years from kerala how he reached in the himalayan mountains the story goes on he was wandering in the himalayan mountains how did he reach there there was no plane flights available how would have how he would have reached imagine and when you think of that imagine it is something beyond imagination he is wandering in the mountains fearless and there he meets a person govind pad acharya he was wandering in search of a master when he met govind pad acharya he asked him who are you then shankar composed nirvan shatkam or atma shatkam a composition of six stanzas the first one mano buddhi ahankar chittani naam man is mind buddhi is intellect ahankar is ego sense chit means the storehouse of the memory these are the aspects of the mind either you are guided by the ego sense or the past memories we continue to linger and live with those o oh, intellect you try to use your intellect there is a difference between intellect and intelligence intelligence is the quality of discerning the situation and trying to find a solution an intellect is totally different and mind is the storehouse like this house has four corners this room has four corners so mind is a mechanism as well as is the storehouse mano buddhi ahankar chitta ninaham i am neither of these i am neither the mind nor the ego sense nor the storehouse of the memory nor intellect and then he says 
it is because of the ego sense it is because of the memory everything comes into existence the relations the person that you call today as your mother is he really your mother is he really your spouse is he really your husband you are seeing him in the body and it is your recognition is only of the body and that creates the problem body and mind if you go beyond the body and mind and the ego sense then the person exists in the formless form beyond the boundaries of the known he is a formless and the formless level everything is seen the space is not bounded by anything but it is the body and mind that encompasses that particular space and you give it a name form and shape so he is saying that i have no father no mother no spouse nothing yet still i do an act on this stage you see these actors that is one of the most beautiful dimension of his spirituality the actors the amount of acting they have done the marriages on the stage and it happened that the two movies of a particular actor may be going on and in the movie he married two different persons two different actresses it is only for a short period of time that there is togetherness but life is beyond that mano buddhi ahankar chitta ninaha i am neither the mind nor the ego sense then he goes on saying i am neither the virtue nor the sin i am neither this nor that then who are you chiranand rupa shivoham shivoham my form is eternal unborn that which is in me that which enters the body is beyond birth and death it was never born never died eternal it was in the beginning it is now it will be mirza galib says if there was nothing god would be there that eternalness that always exist this is space where this building is existing has existed ever forever now there is a structure if today the owner decides to change the house the space will be there but the structure will not be there and next time you visit the structure will be different last time i visited this basement was slightly different few things were added to it now the space is same but new things are added to it according to the convenience and the resources of the owner we keep on adding this relationship that relationship and continue these as ultimate and then we suffer undergo pain and pleasure he says chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham and here shiva does not represent the hindu deity shiv means that which is eternal that which is formless that which is beyond all that is known and this is how he continues this is a beautiful composition known as nirvan shatkam or atma shatkam you can look at youtube i have downloaded a 1 hour composition and saved it on my flash drive and play it in my car always chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham therefore you understand the nature of the mind and do not reject if the problem is there yes there is a problem then you can find the solution but if you evade the problem then there is then for what are you going to find the solution the solution lies in total acceptability anything rejected never leaves you it simply moves from conscious mind to unconscious mind and it continues to bother you in dreams it hallucinates and in many ways it bothers you from the lightest part of your being it moves to the darkest layer where you cannot even face it that is why it happens when these 
circumstances and situations and relations or whatsoever problem you have, you reject it, you will find that you are alone, it is bothering you. You are doing something and you remember it bothers you and eventually you in enter into a state of depression that you are trying to get rid of it and it is not coming out. And eventually it happens that you become oblivious of it but it is there the, and it is more alive than ever. It is better to face the enemy than to keep the enemy at your back and when you keep the enemy at the back and you become oblivious and you think that this problem is not there, it becomes more dangerous. It can stab you any moment and you will not know. So never reject any problem. And I have not told you to reject the mind. Mind is a... I have told you not to reject the problem, but not the mind. Mind is a beautiful mechanism. Indeed, it is one of the miracles of the existence. Man has not been yet able to create anything comparable to human mind. Even the most sophisticated computers are, not, are nothing compared to human mind. A single human mind is capable of carrying all the information that is there in the libraries of the world. Its capacity is almost unbounded, but it is a machine, it is not you. To get identified with the wrong is the problem, it is not you. To make it master is wrong. Also, to be guided by it is wrong. But to be the master and allow this mechanism to work for you is perfectly right. Mind is a mechanism. Just you have a salesman, it, he works for you. But do not allow this salesman to become your boss, otherwise it becomes a problem. So mind is a useful mechanism, you can use it. Without the mind, how would you solve the problem? It is for the emotions to create the problems. Lack of understanding the emotions that creates the problem. And it is the intelligence that solves the problem. And where does intelligence comes from? Comes from the mind. Mind is the melting pot where intelligence functions. It is most important mechanism and tremendously valuable. So never reject the mind. To reject it will impoverish you instead of enriching you. But do not reject problem. Accept it. And then you will find that you are moving in a totally different direction. I am not against the mind. I am totally in favor of transcending the mind, transcending the ego sense, transcending the memory, transcending the all that aspects that mind is connected with. When we talk about ego sense, Sufi path explains different aspects of nafs. And if you reject, you cannot transcend it. Use the mind as a stepping stone. It all depends on you. You can make it a hindrance as well as you can make it a stepping stone. You are going along the way and you see stones. You can use these stones to step over it and cross and reach the other side. Or you can lament how am I going to go on the other side the road is blocked there is stones you have a GPS system learn to use this is one of the most beautiful mechanism and that immediately recalculates your route and gives you a direction how to find an alternate route allow the mind as that either you rejected, deny and that destroyed or you can make 
it is a stepping stone accept it and you try to understand in the very effort of understanding the mind you will realize that transcendence happens you are neither the mind am i relationship it is a act that i am performing on this stage the two people in love with one another sleeping together have their own dreams both of them sleeping together on the same bed but they dream differently you do not both of you do not have the same dream so when someone ask i said so what about your wife she uses her things i use my things i never use her things she never use my things she has her own dreams she dreams in her way i dream in my way so there is i make it as a joke make it but this is a part of understanding that i am acting on this stage that today this is my mother but the moment my grandmother passed away she is no more physically only the memory remains but if you have lived the right moments right ways then those memories will not haunt you instead it will become a moment of transformation the words of the master the messages the moments you have experienced in extreme lovingness you can use those to transcend like when i remember the sayings of the master now instead of lamenting the person is not there is not the way it is i am going into the memory but the other aspect is i ask what is my religion she says your religion is the same as that of god now this can transcend me this can transcend me beyond the mind but if i continue to lament the way we do then i am within the mind i am extracting those moments those sayings which will help me to transcend beyond that and that is what you are not rejecting the mind you understanding it what i need to keep you have a very simple mechanism you understand what to keep on your computer so that it does not slow down but what happens our mind slows down and it always brings the cookies onto the surface you know the mechanism how to remove the cookies from your computer but you do not know the mechanism how to remove those cookies that keep on surfacing the unwanted sites keeps on coming popping up we do not know all these things that come again and again to the mind they are like cookies you are intelligent enough to remove the cookies from the computer why can't you do that from the mind now in that the message of the master comes useful chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham i am neither the body nor the mind nor intellect nor anything else the body came afterwards the body was formed through the mechanism of ovum and sperm it grew when it reached a certain level of maturity then that which was entered there so i was never born never died simply i am manifesting through this body in this life how can there be a relation this person that i call my father once he is no more physically will i be able to recognize him that he was my father but in memory if i continue to remain i may remain lamenting over it i have told him there is a responsibility of the son towards the parents i have finished this consciously it is not important for me to do your funeral or anything else anybody can do that but to remove that aspect hindus when they perform the funeral service after the body is cremated then they take a piece of a stick and they hit the skull it is a symbolic aspect 
it means I am bursting your head that was carrying on all the negativities. And this you can do in your lifetime. What I am doing? I am doing that important aspect of the funeral service for each one of you. Bursting your head and dissolving it, transcending it. And you have to help yourself also so you don't need any rituals to be done. No one needs to do any rituals for me after I leave this world. The, this one has to do that uh, sacrifice, the, uh, particular ritual or that. It is not needed. Because in my life I have attained that state of transcendence that these things are meaningless. I am hitting your heads. Hitting that aspect that is continuing to linger in your linger you and create the problem. Clinging is bound to happen if you reject the mind. Then you need something you need something else to cling to you. And then you will start clinging to awareness. And clinging is nothing but mind functioning from the back road, from the back door. Clinging is another aspect of, if you cling to awareness or anything, that is another aspect of the mind and that is bound to happen to people who reject and repress. The question is of transformation. The mind has to be used rightly. You can use it. It is something like this. You, have, you are watching a television show you identify with a particular scene on the stage and you are thinking about that. If it has a resemblance with a problem in your life, you are thinking about it and you have not learned to use the mind rightly. It happened once. My daughter was a small, five years of age. Watching a television show on that there was a white dog that resembled the dog that we had. The dog got killed on the, in the, the show. She started crying. It became difficult to convince her that it is not our dog. And we had to carry, bring the dog and show it to her. It is not, that was a movie. So are you a child or a grown up person? Grown up does not mean we grow up physically. Grown up means we are growing up in awareness. That whatsoever is happening, this person that we call our spouse, our husband, our father, our mother, is not really my mother, not father, not anything. This is a stage. The world is fine, a stage on which we come to act our parts. Then do the most because frigid claws of death may soon descend and seal your humble fate and then you shan't have time to mend. You shan't have time to me mend. The wheel of time to swiftly it moves goes on mopping as it rolls. No power can its fury add. The acting, the movies show this to us very clearly. In a particular movie one of the actor, the Indian actor dies. Everyone lamenting. So they said, he died, crying. The movie becomes emotional. The next person comes out of the same, the Mediplex, and he says, oh, what a wonderful act he did in that movie, he did not die. So did he really die? It is the character that he was playing in that particular movie that dies. We are playing a character, and that character has a name. And that character dies. Nothing changes, but we continue to remain in that character. That Shah Rukh Khan in that particular movie died. He had a name. He was, he was acting according to the script that was written. And it was important that he had to die. He had to abandon that relationship. But when he comes out of that stage, comes out of that scene, everything becomes normal. He is aware that he is only acting. He is not involved in that. But we get involved while acting on this stage. 
and that's why we cannot god has given me an opportunity to deal uh, to come here and share my presence my time my being my love compassion with you all there is if i look at my level then there is no difference between you and my me the space here and the space upstairs is the same space but for a purpose of usage it has been decorated differently we are all in our spaces chidanand rupa eternal form unborn never born never died osho has written on his shrine never born never died visited this planet between this time these are not mere words it is an understanding the question is of transformation the mind has to be used rightly you can use the pot to boil the water for tea or you can do something else you have a knife in your hand in the hands of a doctor the knife becomes source of life in the hands of a bandit knife becomes a source of source that takes away that has the capability to take away the life how it is the mind that the knife has no purpose it is it does not know anything inert it is the mind that makes you use for giving a life or taking life from someone you have to learn to use the mind rightly should i allow this circumstance and situation to embitter me or sour my sour my life or use this as a stepping stone to go beyond if you learn the art using the mind correctly then you will not be clinging to awareness otherwise afraid of the mind that it may come back you will try to cling to awareness you will try to remember remember clinging in clinging it has already come back from the back door it is already there clinging is mind clinging is mind and non clinging clinging is intrinsic to awareness you are not clinging to anything as it comes you are using the intelligence you are you remember the words of the men of wisdom there are many you can find all around in one of the plays william shakespeare said to be or not to be is the question this is a spiritual statement none so while upon this earth that live everyone has something good to give but we cannot find sometimes a person once a person told me that there is a problem between him and his wife so i said you have to tell her that she may be 60% right but you bound to be at least 40% right is not always she is right or you are wrong but we, if we understand this we have a, we develop a greater understanding clinging is mind and non clinging is intrinsic to awareness you cannot cling to awareness if you cling it is just a phenomena of the mind your awareness is just a pseudo thing created by the mind because you were asking too much of it it is false utterly false if you cling to awareness then it is false so that is why it is important to understand what awareness it is it is the way how to look at the particular thing how to use your intelligence how to use your mind as a mechanism to transcend beyond the situations and remember when you grow in awareness love blossoms as the blossoming of awareness and ultimate flowering of love is awareness and ultimate flowering of awareness is love and when you attain to total awareness love is springs forth as compassion buddha's love 
is not called love, it is compassion. Life becomes really alive when love blossoms. You can choose either way. You can start the way of love and awareness will blossom. If you follow the way of awareness, love will blossom. And in the absence of love, life becomes a dumb bird that cannot sing or a bird without wing that cannot soar in the sky. Love or awareness both are necessary together. A life without love is crippled inwardly, paralyzed from outside. Everything will be as it should be, but from inside something is missing, something which makes the life valuable, something without which there is total darkness. Try to understand the nature of the mind. Try to understand awareness. Do not reject the mind. Use it as a mechanism and in that you transcend beyond. Do not cling to anything and accept the problems when they arise. And then you realize that automatically you will find the solution will begin to happen and that is the most beautiful way. The love, love is the lamp of your innerness, so is awareness, it is the light within. Love brings many problems, sometimes the problem becomes so big that it seems safer to avoid it. It brings anxiety, conflict, fear and bondage. It is absolutely needed. The person who avoids love is committing suicide. Those who live calculatedly, whose life style is rooted in arithmetic, whose vision is material, worldly, the outside, whose vision consists only of the miserable, the logical, they are bound to decide to remain against love. For them, love remains a madness. And when I say love, I mean understanding that we are part of one cosmic harmony. I am not separate from you. Physically, mentally, we are separate from one another, but as far as the space is concerned, we are one. The space that with, within you and me is the same. You have fill that space with unnecessary, unwanted things. I have this space empty, anyone can come. It is unbounded. It is flexible. As many people wish they can come in. And that is where the universality is. Then love becomes compassion. And that is the way how to understand awareness based. Love and awareness are not separate, two sides of the same coin. Either you go this way or that way, but ultimately you will find two blossoms in you.